earlier this year 2022 hi with two other friends of mine you know we just wanted out of community practice we were tired of serving people like we wanted to become our own bosses so we had the idea we had inspiration so we had the conviction that it was time for us to start our own community pharmacy in nigeria but personally as god would have it you know god just changed my plans you know the way god works now so I had a change of plan along the line while my two other friends eventually went ahead to open their community practice this year <laughs> and guess what where i am presently belongs to one of those two friends of mine so today we're basically going to be hearing from my friend how she was able to resign from a 7 30 a.m to maybe 8 30 p.m job to start her own community pharmacy and then um, all young pharmacists out there can find this video very useful or if they have the dream you know to be their own bosses someday so welcome with me pharmacist love she's been a friend from way back so welcome with me on the podium pharmacist love you're welcome hi <laughs> let's just dive straight into the business of today mm -hmm. fam love if i may ask you what inspired you to resign from your job and to start a community practice i would say it's passion that prompted me to open up mine. It has always been um, something I've wanted ever since I entered pharmacy school. So everything I've been doing, working in a community setting, just like she has said, I've always been a community person all my life, like ever since I graduated from pharmacy school. So everything I've done, all the steps I've taken, has always been geared towards opening mine. So when it was set time, like I've gathered a little and I support was coming from here and there. I just said, it's okay, this is the time. Boom, I started. <laughs> wow. wow. My friend's drive is quite different from my drive because uh, when I wanted to become my own boss, what was driving me was the fact that I was done with community practice. I was done working for others. Someone, I just okay. wanted to be my own boss and have control over my time. And the <laughs> fact that, you know, sometimes when you overstay when you overwork you spend extra time at work you don't get compensated in fact you don't even get it thank you meanwhile if you are one minute or two minutes or ten minutes Please. late oftentimes you have to clock in and clock out and if you are late at the end of the month they will deduct from your salary i was just you know i was just done at that moment and that was what was driving me to want to hold my own community family so for my friend our case is different because she had everything planned out being that her dad is a pharmacist, her <laughs> uncle is a pharmacist. In fact, around oh. 2014-2015, we had our IT at our uncle's place, and that was where we became very close. Um, talking about strategic locations, because oftentimes we hear young pharmacists say they are looking for strategic locations to start their own pharmacy. So what were the things you considered when you were looking for a place to rent? What were the strategic in quotes now that you were particular about when you were looking for somewhere to rent? Oh, uh, for the location, uh, from what I gathered, uh, it should be somewhere between commercial setting and also residential setting. So, so that there will be during the morning duty, you have enough ants, you have enough sales, and also in the evening as well. So, it should not be fixed to one side, it should be balanced. If you can get somewhere that is very, very balanced, so that's a huge plus. Then, it should be somewhere accessible, like a junction. Somewhere where you know, not, I mean, you're not restricted to only people living in a particular place or uh, it's only the same faces you keep seeing all the time. So it should be somewhere where you keep seeing new faces and people that are just going, I mean, somewhere very accessible where you get to meet different people every day. So like she rightly said, good road network, like somewhere easily accessible and also yeah. it should be between, it shouldn't be densely residential. Before now, I thought it was densely residential area, mm -hmm. somewhere close to the market mm -hmm. and all that. So it's not market per se, but that has commercial activities Activity going on. Yeah. And I remember working with one boss okay. that intentionally opened his pharmacy along the entrance of a major estate in Ibado. Okay. <laughs> he was targeting only the residents of the estate. Okay. Meanwhile, <laughs> he did his feasibility studies according to him. Mm -hmm. And... Along the line, I just discovered that these patients were not coming. The residents were not entering. And one of them had to open up to me that the reason why they are not coming is because they believe that my boss has come to extort them. Okay. And they would rather go out, out and buy their items outside where they don't know their status. They don't and know their the, financial sorry status. For you short. And the funniest thing about this client is, uh, if they now go outside and confirm that your prices are way okay, the shame 
some of them, the shame will not uh, make them to come back and tell you that, okay, we are sorry, actually your prices are okay. They will just like bone off, like, okay, uh, I'll, I'll get it somewhere else, like without coming back to you. So when so, you're considering location, be mindful, don't, 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 don't focus on just a category of people. A population. Your demography wow. must be wide. Wow. Wow. Like you should focus low income earners, Everybody. below average, average, above average, and the rich. So cite your location somewhere where you have all these categories of people. Not just because rich people are yeah. So you I know this I, I, I think this is a income. strategy helps for people that got it right during COVID period mm -hmm. that people were basically at home. Mm -hmm. So this was the residential people that were enjoying that time because commercial activities were not going on. Mm -hmm. So you now imagine someone that cited this uh, pharmacy near a commercial setting. Only. That's that's a big problem, a huge, a huge one. loss. So yeah. just try to strike a balance, a balance between commercial and residential. Not yes, yes. And something similar to what you're selling so that you have people start comparing prices around and all yeah, that. Yeah. So uh, one other thing that I have heard is that if it is at, uh, around a major bus stop, then it's a plus to you because when people take bikes, they can easily alight at that bus stop. When people take cabs, they can highlight exactly. at that bus stop. So if you have the a shop, people will be more. more. So if you have, a, um, a, if you get a shop around a major bus stop, that's also a plus. And then talking about hospitals around or maybe yeah. laboratories around, that's very good. It's, so it's, 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 uh, well. it could be a blessing. It could be a cost actually <laughs> because some hospitals will stop their medications by themselves. They might not patronize you. Well, well, I don't. I don't. I won't say it's actually a minus or it's where well, it's of course everything has own advantage and disadvantages. But um, it's more of a plus because all you just need to just reach, uh, reach a compromise. Okay, if we are getting from us, we'll be getting this particular discount or something, something like that. So it's Good just something to. <laughs> so if, and if there are more, like not just one, yeah. so you have you can select from a lot of them that are around. So and also laboratory have, somewhere you can refer then you can refer you. back to you as well so it's a plus to you thank mm. you very much now talking about finances now like you started early this year or like mid this year mm. how much would you say it cost you to start off this cute it's cute because it has the basic things that a community I'm pharmacy sure. should have it is cute and i love it i've been this is my third time coming here the first time i was here she was so busy i had to reschedule and the next time i came i had issues with my microphone and i had to come again today and it's been busy you know we've been going on and off like that so this is a cute place like how much did you start with talking about rent talking about infrastructures putting all these chefs to, in place and all that how much did you spend like in total okay um while well, starting i think i, I had like um uh, i think three three him that's three million yeah. that was earlier this year too. so at times goes on you know you get um just by the grace of god though so people will come to support friends and family mm. so i can say what actually finished this um setting is like four million wow. and that's as at Earlier, early, early this year, early this year. <laughs> and you understand the situation, the economic so exactly. situation so of Nigeria. So you can Nigeria use that one to judge currently. now, but just to have an idea. Mm -hmm. So like, and it also million. depends on the location, exactly, you are and renting. the size that you are looking for. Just and like she says, this is, is like it? almost thirty square meters. Exactly, exactly. This place is exactly, exactly thirty, 30 square, meters. square meters. So if you are renting a bigger shop, it might be more, more expensive. Mm -hmm. So depending on the location and the size and yes. the taste. But with like 4 him, you can still start something. Definitely. But if, if you want to start, and assuming you want to start just now, you'll be spending like, let's say, maybe 5 him or 6 him because these yeah, prices are not smiling now. Mm -hmm. So, young pharmacists out there, if you have like 3 him, 3.5 him, I will encourage you to go ahead. Please, yeah, really, just start really looking for a strategic yeah, location. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Following the definition of strategic that we have mentioned here. Now, let's talk about regrets. Do you have any regrets or any lesson that you have learned so far and or you will discover that have you discovered that you made a mistake that you would like to you know write the mistake and you would want to advise any young pharmacist against making such mistakes when they want to open their own pharmacy okay i would rather put it uh, to be what i've learned so far because uh, just like i said before um i worked with uh, in a community pharmacy where i was coming from so i've learned a lot from there because it's also in a uh, new premise i registered the place newly mm -hmm. so i've gathered a lot from uh, the owner i mean the experiences i've gathered has really helped me so i won't call them regrets because i've already seen like foreseen how startup looks like uh -huh. so what i would say is staffing i had issues with uh, staffing because while i was starting the uh, majority of the staff that i got were students because asu was on strike 
So they are about thinking that, okay, I've skipped through this year, like, as is not going <laughs> to call up their strike. And then all of a sudden, as a call up their strike, so all my staff went for all of them. So I was left alone. It was frustrating. So I was tired. Mm -hmm. I just felt like closing the whole thing. I'm like, I'm so tired. I can't continue wow. again, but I just keep at it. And then, yeah, I'm better now. I'm better now. So uh, I would say we should look for... For your staffing, it should be very that one is very, very important. And it should make uh, their working condition uh, conducive for them to stay. Not like you'll be staffing every other month, thereabouts. So staffing is very important. And also uh, resource for your uh, items, whether drugs or also the supermarket items. So you try to check different uh, wholesalers or distributors. Now you don't stick to one and just believe that someone is like that's the best price person is giving you. Because I I I I had issues with that. I thought the, there was one particular retailer that uh, I mean wholesaler that I uh, I I got more majority of my products from. So it was later I discovered that wow, the difference was so clear, it was so huge. And people were complaining, and you know, as a startup, you can, you must be very careful with your pricing so that people will not just tag the place as being expensive and they will not even bother patronizing you again. I know what of mouth in Nigeria, what of mouth can kill you without people even knowing what is going on. So I just had to like in fact there were sometimes I had to sell the same price just wow. to bring it down because when I was seeing the differences, I mean I comparing it to other was like I was seeing like five hundred dollars difference on oh, one item. Cool. Wow. Like it was so much. Sometimes I just had to sell at a loss, of course, wow. using other consultation fee and others to wow. cover it up. But then, so that one opened my mind. Like, I don't trust anybody on Trevisit. I don't get my attendance on Trevisit from oh, one yes, particular OSIS. So, OSIS. So, I just try to check through all of them and see the price that is favorable to me. And uh, so, I'm sure when people come and start, uh, you know, clients now, they start saying, no, oh, are you sure this is your price? Is somewhere? I will go to this place and check. Say, You're free, ma. Our price tag is on it. You can compare. <laughs> so, in terms of stocking, you yeah, should shop yeah, around. Exactly. Don't have a don't, lawyer wholesaler. And then, customer. apart from that, don't be lazy because it's not easy. Seriously. Don't say you want to buy all your products from red. Exactly. From red. Because you might just be doing yourself harm. Because so. people will compare. That one is natural. Mm -hmm. They will. Mm -hmm. And so you must be on your hay games. At least if they are going to compare, there shouldn't be that huge wide or wild difference in your price. Okay, you mentioned, you talked about staffing. Mm -hmm. And um, in one of my videos here, I talked about how pharmacies can make life easy for one another in the sense that one thing that I dislike, I detest so much about community practice is the weekend calls particularly. <laughs> Imagine me working eight hours Mondays through Fridays and on weekends I'm working on godly 14 hours on a Saturday. Mm. So what do you think? What do you want to do differently? Because I am sure we've discussed this. What do you want to do differently now that you are an employer, you are your boss and you are, because you're just starting, you are managing this place for yourself, by yourself. You are your superintendent pharmacist. But a yeah. time is coming when you will be so big that you won't be able to sit here. You need to employ a no. superintendent. What yes. do you intend to do to make life easy for your staff? Because you talked about making life easy for um, to our domestic staff, like the salespersons, so that you won't have frequent turnovers. So what do you want to do differently? Because well, in my video, I talked about working like 12 hours, 3 to 4 days in a week and having the rest of the week to rest. Everywhere where I've worked before opening my, I only work 8 hours. So even I've never weekends. had even weekends. So I've never had the experience of working at a stretch or working 12 hours or thereabouts. So, and I don't want to, I don't think, I can't practice that because I never experienced this. Apart from the fact that, okay, now I'm the boss, so I have to be here almost 24-7 in as much as this place is open. But for uh, yeah, as time goes on, that we need to employ someone, a pharmacist, of course, uh, because I believe in productivity, not just the length of hours that you are working. So I the, uh, the number of hours that you'll be productive, that's what I need. So I don't need you to just be there as figure eight. Mm -hmm. I need you to be working. Mm -hmm. And I know we are human. So eight hours is eight hours for me. So we are not machines. Eight <laughs> hours and then eight Mondays hours. through Fridays and eight hours weekend. Alternate, alternate weekends. Yes, That's yes, beautiful. Yes, yes. That's cool. In fact, I wish that our employers would be giving us call allowance for weekends. You make, we the, make a, yeah, you wages extra. for salaries mm -hmm. uh, for weekends be different, be different from, from weekdays. Weekend. That would really make <laughs> more sense. So um, where would you advise people to stock their pharmaceutical products from? Would you advise them to, to buy from representatives, company reps, medical sales reps, 
or to go and buy from Osela's from experience, which okay. one seems to be cheaper to you? For I me, know the method of payment for reps is quite different. flexible in the sense that you can buy and not pay, meaning you can even do sales or return, which you are you might not be able to do with wholesalers. But in terms of pricing, what have you discovered? To so me, uh, so far, all the reps that I've dealt with, their prices are almost the same as the wholesalers. So, but the issue I had when I opened was uh, the ground has been spoiled. So then wholesalers were not ready to just release their goods for you without you paying like 90% or some 100%. If you just carry the one that you know you can pay for at the moment. So until you be a bit trust with them, like after purchasing for like five months or something consistently, that's when they can now release their goods to you and then you pay back before you order another one. So for me, I, I just with all of them. Wholesalers, reps, everybody, because I needed help at that moment. Because while well, well, I were the experiences I gathered from my boss, my previous boss was just go to one of the wholesalers. And since I have a senior colleagues that or can vouch for me, that can stand in for me. But when the whole thing started, I got that I, I found out that the game has changed entirely. You just have to pay everything that you want to get. They know they are not ready to allow any senior colleagues to stand for. Young in that situation, assist. then you should patronize the reps more. So then, yes, that was why I said I all of them came through for me. So I had to call my friends that were reps and I refer to people that I've known before. They, in what way can you help me out? I need these things. So for them, I mean, God just helped me. They were so compassionate enough. They didn't give me any exorbitant price. They gave me the correct price so, and <laughs> gave me time to pay uh, to pay off. So, so if you're a young pharmacist, you need to develop good relationship, relationship with, with everybody, people, especially yes, people yes. that will eventually work. <laughs> you need their help. Mm -hmm. If you plan to open your community pharmacy, you might still see a is a ladder you might still meet at yeah. some point in yeah, life. Yeah, so yes. you have to build good relationships with people, and that leads to the question: Why? Because. I found out that community pharmacists, maybe in Ibado, they don't like to pay representatives. Why do community pharmacists prefer to all reps that are seemingly doing them favor by giving them items, drugs on credit? Why do, why do they prefer to all reps? And at the same time, they will carry their cash and go to wholesalers to go and purchase and do cash and carry. Now that you are on I, the field, I, 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 I don't think I can answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> because, okay. I can say both the everywhere I've worked, they don't go red. So I don't think I've ever experienced yeah. that. So for the, me to understand the reason why they do that. My friend has so, been experience on this field. I don't think like, I, I don't she think has not I can. With, she has not worked with seriously, seriously. I don't know because I can't, I can't relate. Why would you do that? In okay. first, like someone trying to help. Because I know how all of them stood for me and they gave me goods. They gave me drugs free. Not like free, like uh, to pay later. And it's company's price. It's company's price. So why will I, I don't know, why will I pay them back in a bad way, like not paying some, them up? Some I reps don't know. will even supply goods that are about to expire, like maybe five Self, months, okay. four months, and they will slash the, the price. price. And these people will find it difficult to pay. They would have finished selling all these drugs. So, see, reps are seeing a lot in this. Exactly. In this <laughs> <laughs> Finally, what advice do you have for young pharmacists out there that are probably still doing their internship or serving or still gathering experience? What advice do you have for them, especially those that are business-oriented okay. and want to open their own community pharmacy in the future? Okay. Um, I will use myself as a case study. I already knew that um, I'll be starting up my community pharmacy. So what I did is I was so strategic. I wasn't really particular about the pay. Of course, the pay is also part of it. Like, okay, let me give you an example. I've always worked with a big pharmacy. When I know it was time for me to now start up something, I needed experience on how to start up and what I need to do, what I need to put in place. Because, okay, I try asking all those big, big pharmacies, but they you know their experiences are faded. Like, they can't remember how they started yeah, again. And I could not relate. They would be like, ah, I started in a very small place. And at that time, yeah, 30, 30 square meter was not um, fixed. Mm -hmm. So it's anywhere you get, you can start up. So I could not relate. I needed someone I can relate to, someone that just started there, I mean, not quite long. So what I did was to look out for a new premise. I wanted a distributed pharmacist. And I opted in for him to work with. So while I was there, I didn't look for I didn't lose focus. I was asking relevant questions before the person would forget because it's normal. I was asking, okay, how much was this? How did they go about this? From where did they source for? And the person uh, was willing, willing to open up. For that. Yeah, because yeah, not yeah, everybody yeah. would be willing to open up. Yes, to yes. So what I would say, if you have just know the field that you are going into, if it is community, I would advise that you start you you go to where or you work with someone that is just starting maybe two or three years that can 
explain how things are to you because it's not as rosy as we think. And then you have you get hands on experience. experience. And person will be really will be ready to help to also um I mean um we'll be able to refer you, will learn you from the person's experience, experience then refer you to possible people that can help you out when you are ready to go. So thank you so much for your time. You're I welcome. don't want to bother us about PCN regulations and no requirements because of course you can always read it up. You can read it up. You can visit PCN yeah, office yeah, to find yeah. out. So thank you guys so much for watching. We really appreciate you. Do well to subscribe, like, and share this video so that I can reach people who truly need uh, this particular information in this video. Thank you so much, and we hope to catch you see ya in our next video. Bye. Bye. <laughs>